This lesson is meant just to stimulate some more ideas for what might be the goals that you bring to your channel. There will be some goals that you already have brought to this course, but we can open up things a little bit more. So what might be some of the goals that you would have for your audience? Or for yourself as an individual? As well as for the institution, the institutional context that you inhabit in your discipline, in your field, in the department or center or institute in which you work. Let's start with audience. Presumably you work with students, with peers, with colleagues in the field, and you have information that you want to share with them. Maybe you have been, in the course of your research, developing some type of research archive. You've only been able to use some of it in your publications. You want to use other parts of that research archive and make them public in video format. Sharing an archive of primary materials or of research and teaching materials may be part of your goals for the channel. One of your goals is to teach. You have a body of information, of theories and methodologies that you want to share with the broader public. Over your career to date, you have also developed ideas about the profession and how best to navigate it. So you want to share some of your tips and suggestions and your experience about the profession of academia, of being a researcher, of being an educator. You want to share experiences and insights from your career. Or perhaps you have in mind some type of service that you want to do for your field or your discipline. You realize that it requires a certain type of advocacy and you want to use this video-based platform to perform some of that advocacy. We assume that if you're taking this course, you want to do a type of public scholarship and that you're not satisfied with just teaching the students at your institution or interacting with peers in your subfield, but that you want to reach a broader public. And so one of your audience related goals for your channel is to identify and connect with that public. You may already have some target populations in mind, maybe journalists or public officials or policy makers, but there will also be plenty of people out there, audiences that you just cannot expect or anticipate. We strongly encourage people in academia to be open to and receptive to a wide variety of people who might take an interest in your work. You will also bring plenty of personal goals to this enterprise. If you're an educator and you've been teaching courses year in, year out, you want to refine your craft, you want to become a better teacher, and maybe you can use this video platform in which you can really regard yourself from the camera's eye, you can hear yourself as other people hear you in a new light and therefore refine your craft. Maybe you have some experience doing video production but you want to up your game. Or maybe you have absolutely no experience in doing online videos at all. Maybe Zoom is the farthest you've gotten. Producing videos can take a lot of work and so one of the things we're trying to do in this course is to streamline some of that advice and some of those best practices. One key goal might be to create a research or teaching asset, an audiovisual format that you can use again and again. For example, an online course or a research archive that you've developed. I know that for me that was one of the key things that drew me to the YouTube platform. Sure, I had done online courses for my institution that were password protected, but I wanted to do something that was open access for many other people. And indeed, I received a lot of responses from people around the world who really appreciated that. People who didn't have access to a university education, were not currently enrolled, were retirees. As an educator, you may also not want to be giving those same 24 lectures every single year. You may want to have excellent version that you have recorded and that you can play for other people and then use your classroom time for other activities. You want to promote your research. You have new articles and books coming out and you want to share those findings with other people. People who may not find them or people who may find them eventually but you want to accelerate that process and giving them this very accessible inroad into your work. You might also be extending your research and teaching and expertise into new dimensions. So one of the things that you can do on YouTube is a type of public drafting. You can do a lot of exploratory work. You can do things that are a bit more experimental and you can get feedback on them from a much broader public. Of course you'll want to take into account all of the potential risks and rewards of that type of very open approach. I'll just mention one other personal goal for now, and I think it's a tremendously important one. That is to save yourself time. Yes, video production and creating a YouTube channel can be very time intensive, but if you can do that one lecture and do it right, that can save you a lot of time in the long run. And you are creating time that other people can use. If people can go to your channel and see that talk that you gave five, ten years earlier, that is going to have tremendous benefits in the long run. Again, if you're teaching a course, you can just press play on yourself and then you can use your classroom time for other activities. We also encourage you to think about goals for your institution. So maybe your department or your center or your institute actually already has a YouTube channel and they've just been kind of dumping their public lecture series videos on that channel. But they haven't been doing any cleanup. They haven't been adding any metadata or description of the videos. And you want to kind of up that game. 
because you want the great work that is being done at your organization to reach a larger public. So one of your goals is to do a little bit of institution building because institutions like universities and departments can be very powerful platforms for spreading good ideas. And so you have an active role to play in that process. So one of the themes that we'll come back to again and again during this course is how you can blend these personal, audience-driven, and institutional goals and achieve many of them. You can think of plenty of other goals too, but for now, here is your homework for this lesson. Try to be as intentional as possible about your YouTube channel. So whether it's a new channel or whether it is one from your institution that you're modifying, you can have multiple goals. So write those down. What are the goals for your audience? What are the goals for yourself? What are the goals for your institution? Write those down, and if you're feeling extra ambitious, you can also divide those into short-term, medium-term, and long-term goals. So what do you want to accomplish right away, and what might be some of your 5, 10, 15-year goals down the road? This is not just some abstract exercise, because the goals that you set will help to determine the types of videos that you create. So the last part of this homework, which will be kind of an ongoing process, is to keep going back to your goals and let that shape the videos that you create. And then after you've created the videos, see, are they actually serving your goals? If they are, great. If not, then you can make modifications to make them even better.